Hey guys, we're going to look at a particular section of chemical equilibrium known as the equilibrium constant, Kc, and the method by which we calculate it, which is rice tables. Nothing to do with uh, basmati or jasmine or tastic, but it is genuinely a fantastic method of solving this particular problem. But puns and silly jokes aside, let's get into this. What is the equilibrium constant? Well, Kc is often described as the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. Now, this is an informal way of describing it, but it is very helpful. And essentially, in a, in a broader understanding, um, Kc tells us how far the reaction has progressed. Let's consider when the reaction starts, we will have 100% reactants. And given that it's a reversible reaction, it's going to start to make its way towards 100% products. But of course, the reverse reaction is going to kick in and it's never going to get exactly there. And so it's going to settle somewhere in between the two. Now, where it, where it settles is how far the reaction has, it, has progressed. Is it further towards the left-hand side, uh, more reactants, or is it further towards the right with more products? That's what KC is going to tell us. So if it's settled bang in the middle with uh, the, the products and reactants being in even proportions, well then this concentration should be equal to this concentration. So if those two numbers are equal, then what should Kc be equal to? It should be equal to one. Okay, so a Kc of one means that our reaction is pretty much bang in the middle. What about if it's further to, let's say, the left-hand side? Okay, so if it's on, it's, if it's on this side and we've, we've got more reactants than products, how's that going to affect the Kc value? Well, we've got fewer products, so just a small concentration of products, and a large amount of reactants, okay? So when you look at that number as a fraction, imagining those two to be numbers, that's going to be a small fraction. In other words, it's going to be less than one. Kc is going to be less than one if the reaction has not progressed particularly far. And obviously, the opposite is true if it's, if it's much more towards the products side of things. We're going to have a lot of products and a, only a few reactants, therefore a large number over a small number. That is going to give us Kc greater than 1. So in fact, if we were to draw a graph of this, roughly, um, what we'd end up with... Let's just have a different color for the line. Oh, here we go. What we'd end up with... It would start at 0 over here and it would gradually increase to 1, and then it would go up and up and up, and in fact become exponential, and it would eventually reach infinity if it was 100% products. So um, a Kc of less than 1, let's say, for example, 001, or, or 0, 0,01, um, would mean a very low yield, whereas um, a Kc of, for example, 100, would be a high yield. In other words, lots of products have been uh, produced. So that's a little bit of an overview of what Kc tells us, is how far has uh, the reaction progressed. Now, in terms of the calculations, as I said, that particular equation is an informal way of describing our Kc. So don't write it like this in your exam, okay? Um, what we'll need to do is have a look at the general formula and then apply it to our actual equation. So in an equation where we've got um, A and B is the products and lowercase a and lowercase b are our coefficients, um, then, uh, sorry, these are the reactants. We've got reactants on the bottom here. Okay, these are our reactants. And we're going to have A to the power of its coefficient. Okay, so A to the power of its coefficient. And similarly, B, that substance, the concentration of B, to the power of its coefficient. We do the same on the top with the products. Um, we're going to take uh, the concentration of substance C and put it to the power of its coefficient, small c. And similarly for D. So that's pretty much how that uh, reaction um, uh, that, that's how, that's how that, that expression is put together. So take note that when we're doing concentrations, concentrations only apply to gases and aqueous solutions. If we've got solids and or liquids, um, they won't have a concentration. Um, 
so we do not include them in the KC calculations, only gases and aqueous. So let's look at this example of ammonia being formed, nitrogen and hydrogen forming ammonia. Okay, so we want to see, well, what is uh, the KC expression for this particular equation? So KC is going to be equal to, and then we're going to have a look at products over reactants. So our products is the ammonia. So we're going to take a concentration of ammonia to the power of its exponent. So in other words, squared. Reactants is nitrogen, so concentration of nitrogen. It is a gas, so that's all fine. And it, and it, it has got a coefficient of 1, so we can leave that just like that. And then hydrogen, concentration of hydrogen, once again, once again it is a gas, uh, and to the power of 3. So that then would be our Kc expression for this particular equation. Okay. Let's look at how we then use rice tables to do a calculation of this Kc. Now rice is a little acronym. Um, that tells us the various different aspects of, of the reaction as it progresses. And this table is going to include moles or, and or concentration. Uh, it's things like the initial number of moles, the final number of moles, etc. So let's, let's use the one that we've already been using, uh, creating ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. The first line, R, stands for ratio. Okay, And the ratio is basically the ratio of coefficients from the actual equation. So it's a 1 to 3 to 2 ratio. So we can fill in those numbers at the top of our table there. All right. The next thing is then I. I is the initial amount of moles. Now, let's apply this to a particular example. So here we go. 5 moles of nitrogen and 8 moles of hydrogen are put in a 5 decimeter cubed container. At equilibrium, it's found that 4 moles of ammonia are present. Okay, so we're going to put this into our rice table. We've already got the ratio, the 1 to 3 to 2 ratio from the balanced equation. And we're now going to take the facts that we're given. Now, have a look here. We've got our 5 moles of nitrogen, okay, 8 moles of hydrogen are put in a 5 decimeter cubed container. So that's what we start with. And then later on, at equilibrium, Let's just see at equilibrium. So this is now a little bit f later on. We're dealing with the equilibrium here. Um, we're going to have four moles of ammonia present. So we've got the initial was the five moles and the eight moles of hydrogen put into the container. And at equilibrium, there are four moles of ammonia that have been formed. So let's put those into their appropriate places in the table. Okay, you see that? So the 5 and the 8 of the two substances and the 4 that was formed. Now, even though they haven't told us, we can make an assumption about something else that would be at the initial, um, at the beginning of the reaction, and that's the amount of ammonia. Because they told us nothing about it, we in fact can assume that there wasn't any. So we can put in a 0 for the initial amount of ammonia. So we've now filled in all the facts that we know from the table. And the next step then is to try and fill in the rest of the table. So we've got a couple of rules that we can apply here. And the first one I call the ICE rule. I plus C gives us E. In other words, the initial amount that we had, plus or minus the change. Now the change, by the way, is how much of our chemicals were used or how many were, how much was formed. Okay, so the initial plus or minus the change is going to give us what we have at equilibrium. Quite logical, isn't it? So when we look here, we're going to have initial plus the change or minus the change is going to give us what we have at equilibrium. So all we need to use rule number one is something in the initial row and something in the equilibrium row or something in the change row. Any two of the three and we can, we can apply that equation. So in this case, we do have a zero there and a four there. So that means we can fill in this number here in the middle by looking at the difference. Okay, so I plus 4, in other words, 0 plus 4 is going to give us our 4. Okay, does that make sense? That leads us now to the second rule that we can apply, which is the 
RC rule, okay? So the ratio line in our table is always going to have exactly the same ratio as the change line because the change is the actual chemicals that got used up and formed and they will react according to the balanced reaction. So whatever ratio we have in this line will be will be um, exactly the same ratio as we have down in this line here. Um, now in this case you can see two moles of ammonia would be the balanced equation. In our actual equation we got four moles of ammonia. That's twice as much as we had in the basic ratio. So that little factor times two is what is going to apply across the board for each of those numbers. So three coming down here is also going to be twice as big and the one coming down here is going to be twice as big. Okay, so numbers wise you can see exactly what they're going to be. So let's just have a look here. Okay, the ratios are going to be the same. Um, so 1 to 3 to 2 is the same as 2 to 6 to 4. Now take note that I've used a minus sign for these two, and we had the plus sign for that one. So for the nitrogen and hydrogen, those reactants have been used up, whereas the ammonia has been formed. So look at as what is on the left will have been used up, uh, which is a minus sign, and that which is on the right has been formed, which is a plus sign. Okay, so now all we need to do is apply the ice formula again. So 5 minus 2 is going to give us 3, and 8 minus 6 is going to give us 2. So we complete those in the equilibrium section of the table. Fantastic. So we've completed the whole of the rice part of the table so far. I've probably scored about 4 marks, perhaps, um, which are super easy once you know what to do. We're halfway through. Let's have a look here. Now we're looking at the concentration. So the final little bit that we add on to the rice, you could think of it as rice crackers or rice cakes or, or even chicken and rice if you prefer. Um, so um, rice and chicken, um, we're going to be now looking at the concentration. So we, we're ideally looking at C equals N over V and that equation needs to be shown in some way on your page. So we were told here at the beginning that it was a five decimeter cubed container. So that must appear in the table. Uh, so we're gonna take, for example, for the nitrogen, we're gonna take the three moles that we had and put it over the five, and then the hydrogen, two over five, etc. cetera. Um, and those are, so the equilibrium amounts over the size of our container is gonna give us the concentration. What I would add in here, which I haven't on my PowerPoint, um, is the concentration units, which is moles per decimeter cubed probably a good idea. Okay, so now we've got all of those values. We've completely done the table. We've got five or six marks out of the seven, eight, nine marks available. This is fantastic. We're doing super well. Last thing to do then is to get back to that expression. I remember earlier we had a look at the uh, ammonia expression. And so you would then take the values that you've worked out in your table and substitute them into your expression. Um, super easy. I'm going to leave you actually to do that yourself and check it with your friend or check it with your teacher. But that basically is how we do rice tables. So summary of what we've covered so far. Um, we've got Kc, which tells us how far a reaction has progressed. Then considering uh, what Kc looks like, remember it's, a, it's an equation which informally is the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. But we specifically would do an example like the one we did for ammonia. Okay, then we used rice tables to do our equilibrium calculations where R was ratio, I was for initial, C was for the change, how much was used or formed, E was for how much we had at equilibrium, and then we did the, the chicken bit, um, the concentration, and finally, remember that there's lots of easy marks in this section. Filling out that table is super easy, so there's plenty of marks to get. Key thing for you to do now is practice, practice, practice. So good luck with that. Cheers. <laughs>